After we get done with the presentation, um, we will take questions from the press first, and then we will take questions from the public. The human suffering from this storm is immeasurable. It has been and the human suffering from that this storm has caused has been immeasurable. It is it has been and continues to be painful for too many of our citizens. I understand and share the anger and frustration of people who remain without power. My own power was out for five days. Mayor Triplett and I remain completely committed to doing everything in our power to get things fixed and cleaned up as quickly as possible. And Mayor Triplett, thank you for being here uh, from East Lansing. Uh, we have just come through an historic storm, a storm of the century, and no one could have predicted it. Not its strength, not its devastating impact. And it couldn't possibly have come at the worst, uh, at, at a worse time. It's for everyone involved. It will be the Christmas we never forget. But I will remember this Christmas not just for the crisis that fell upon us, but for the extraordinary power of this community's spirit, our strength, and our resilience. I will remember our amazing partners at the Red Cross and Trinity Church and so many others who have come together as a community to provide a strong safety net for the people impacted by the storm. I will remember the citizens who reached out to help their neighbors, who volunteered their time at a shelter or took friends into their homes, people who treated strangers like friends and friends like family, and that's the way it should be. I'm very proud of this community. No one should have to stay in the dark in a cold house. And we all came together as a community to make sure that anyone and everyone who asked for help found a warm place to stay. I will always be proud of the extraordinary compassion our residents have shown for each other. And I will always be deeply grateful for the impossibly difficult and dangerous work being performed by the men and women up on the poles, in police cars, and on fire trucks and ambulances, the people manning the chainsaws. These brave folks, folks are putting their lives on the line around the clock, day after day, working in the most arduous conditions imaginable in the middle of Christmas to help us get our lives back to normal. Let me assure you, these efforts will continue until every last family in this community has heat and lights. Mayor Triplett and I continue to strongly advise that if you are cold and need a warm place to stay while the fix takes place, we are here to help. If you can't get to a shelter yourself, we will send someone to come and get you. If you are concerned about leaving your pets behind, we will help you find them a place to stay. Six days into the crisis, it is simply too dangerous to stay in your home without heat or lights, especially with the cold weather forecast starting Sunday night. If you are using a hazardous method to heat your home, please stop and get to a shelter before a tragedy occurs. If you are still in your home and holding on by a thread, please call for help. If you need shelter, Trinity Church will remain open as long as there is a need. And God bless Trinity Church. If you are worried about a loved one or a senior or a disabled citizen, please call the police department and request a welfare check. Now I invite Mayor Triplett to offer his perspective. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Bernero. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mayor Bernero, for your comments. Uh, I want to echo the mayor's comments regarding the level of suffering that's taken place during the storm, something that we've all heard from our friends, from our neighbors, from people we hold dear. I want to note uh, at the outset that I'm joined by three of my colleagues on the East Lansing City Council here this afternoon. Mayor Pro Tem Diane Gaderis, Councilmember Kathy Boyle, and Councilmember Ruth Beyer are all with me. Uh, all three of us just came from a demonstration with members of the Glencairn neighborhood in East Lansing and have heard from them personally about how this storm has impacted them. Those are stories that we've been hearing all week from people who are struggling with uh, a storm of this magnitude and trying to stay safe. I also want to echo uh, comments that were made regarding the seriousness with which both Lansing and East Lansing have taken uh, this emergency. 
Our emergency operations center was brought into operation shortly after the storm occurred and has been up and running ever since. And the city in East Lansing throughout has been ensuring the public safety and working to support the power restoration efforts that have been undertaken by the utilities. Our DPW crews worked quickly to clear obstructions from city streets and sidewalks and at this point they are assisting with storm cleanup which we anticipate will take several weeks. The city has alerted residents that debris that's fallen in your yard, be it limbs or branches, trees, can be taken to the curb, and our DPW crews will pick it up for you, but we ask for your patience in knowing that it'll take several weeks for this to be accomplished. We've also operated a 24-hour warming center at the Bailey Community Center throughout this crisis, and will continue to do so until all of our residents have heat and power. The Bailey Community Center is a place 24 hours a day where our residents can go to warm up, to get food and drink, to have access to Wi-Fi and to charge their electronic devices. It's also staffed by East Lansing City staff for the East Lansing Police Department. And throughout this crisis, including today, we are making transportation from ELPD available to any who need transportation to warming centers or overnight sheltering so that people can find access to the services that they need. We've also increased our police patrols in all neighborhoods with outages throughout the community to ensure the security of homes and families in those areas until power is restored. Finally, the city is working to close the information gap by collecting information from our residents about where power outages exist that can be shared with the Emergency Operations Center and with the Board of Water and Light and other utilities to ensure that no one is missed in the process of restoring power. Right now, our focus is and must remain on ensuring public safety and getting people's power back on. Uh, but when this is over, both Mayor Bernero and I agree that there are tough questions that need to be answered and that we will be here today calling for a comprehensive review of this incident from the preparation all the way through implementation of response and the communications that have occurred within. I know that I've shared uh, with many of you my personal feeling that communication during this crisis has been inadequate and I'm glad that we have the opportunity here this afternoon to hear directly from individuals involved in that response including the Board of Water and Light to get questions answered about the status of that response. Having said that, I see people in this audience and I'm surrounded by people up here who have been working in our emergency operations center who have been supporting this effort and I can tell you from my conversations with them and watching them work in the field that they uh, as well as City of East Lansing employees are doing everything in their power to bring uh, this crisis to a quick resolution as quickly as possible. I also want to echo Mayor Bernero's comments regarding the difficult work being done by our DPW crews, police officers, firefighters, and the line men and women who are out there working to restore power. They're working under extremely difficult circumstances and we should all be grateful for the effort that they are putting in to try and get people's heat and power on as soon as possible. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, there will be an opportunity for questions from the media after uh, and then for members of the public. And I would encourage you uh, to ask those questions and to continue to stay in contact with us and to look for more updates from the city of East Lansing as we continue to respond to this emergency. Again, Mayor Bernero, thank you for having us here at the EOC today and thank you all for being here. Thank you, Nathan. Great job. Uh, I appreciate everything you said and I agree with it. Uh, we'd like to take this opportunity to address as many questions as possible and to clear up rumors and misconceptions uh, and misinformation as well. Uh, I just before I came here answered somebody online who sounded pretty desperate and she said she'd heard that the Board of Water and Light basically was done, that they were uh, uh, washing their hands of it, that they'd done everything they can and they were uh, done fixing wires. Um, there are all sorts of crazy rumors out there. So again, I appreciate this opportunity and I asked people, uh, I basically just gave her very uh, basic clear answers that uh, we are not going to be done until every last house is restored. Uh, and I told her, please don't give up hope. Help is in fact on the way. Uh, and that's one thing we want to say very clearly to people listening and, uh, that, that help is on the way, that we are working diligently, that uh, every, uh, all hands are on deck. Um, to get help and we're not giving up on any family and we're not giving up on any neighborhood. Um, I think Peter and his folks will be able to explain why sometimes people, uh, and I've had specific uh, questions asked about why they'll see a truck in their neighborhood and then maybe a few lights will come on after they're there working for a few hours and then the, the, crew, the crew will leave. And Peter has explained to me, you know, what that, that technical process, how they're fixing sort of the big things. Uh, the big circuits and then moving on but uh, I'm sure your folks will be able to address that but they're not giving up on any neighborhood they're not driving away and forgetting people say well they've forgotten us nobody has been forgotten but it is a tedious and difficult process one misperception I'd like to address uh, before I turn it over to uh, the experts here is the issue of emergency declaration which does involve the mayor uh, I have done I think one emergency declaration in my time as mayor I haven't done one here Mayor Triplett has not done one 
And the reason is because it's not called for and it would not help. Uh, many, people, many people don't know the technicalities of what's involved in a mayor, mayoral declaration of emergency. So I'd suggest you know, some research might be in order before people make blanket judgments about how this would help or why it should have been done. Uh, the answer is simple. It wouldn't have changed a thing. Yeah, it wouldn't have changed a thing in this case. In fact, I don't know if you know much about it. Um, it, it wouldn't have brought us any more help. It, it, okay, okay. You can't do that. That's an insult to injury on top of it. You said seven days, by the way. Are you arguing with me? Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. I was told I should have better prepared from their operator. Board and Water and Light should have been prepared and ready and should have had. Wait, there's an admin building downtown. Where's the call? Open it up like a fucking Christmas tree while I got no power on Christmas. So, as I was starting to say, as I was starting to say, uh, it wouldn't have changed anything. It would not have brought us more help. Of course, if it would have, I would have done it. Uh, it, uh, it would not have brought us one more lineman. It wouldn't have brought back power an hour or a day sooner. The state does not have the personnel to bring back power on an emergency basis. The state relies on the same people that Peter Lark and the Board of Water and Light rely on to bring back power. The National Guard cannot provide emergency power restoration. So an emergency declaration would not have solved anything. It would not have expedited anything. Uh, if it had, we certainly would have signed that. The basic things that I have to do, and Trent Atkins, who's our director, can explain in detail, uh, if my police chief and my fire chief tell me that they're overwhelmed, that the local effort, that we're, we're, we're having 911 calls or we're having case uh, responses that we can't handle, then that is one way, that's one uh, indication that we need state help. At no time were we overwhelmed. At no time were our emergency... Oh, right. Right. From, from a municipal... From a municipal standpoint, in terms of answering police calls, in terms of crime, crime, crime is actually down from a year ago. So if there was looting in the streets, if there were fires that we couldn't put out, we had a couple fires. The police chief, if I, the, the, right, there, there are certain, there are some thefts. Yeah, I'm not, that's not true. That's not true. Yes, it that's, is true. Well, that's just not true. I'm, that's just not true. Yeah. I've, I've done it. I've done it. With all due respect, I've done it. And that's what these folks are paid to do. At a nice hotel while you didn't have power. While my job doesn't allow me to do that. And I heard his neighborhood had priority. My neighborhood was my neighborhood was out for five days. Right. And Peter was out for a few days too. So I explain why consumers was able to call in Yeah, people and crews to come combat their outages. I appreciate your being here. I appreciate your frustration. Five crews of five crews of three. Yeah. Well, Peter's here to explain it, and if you'll give him the courtesy of actually listening, if, if, if you'll give us the courtesy, if, if you'll give us the courtesy of listening, then we might be able to get some information. We might be able to share. Great. Great. So, so thank you. So, uh, we have uh, Chief Talaferro here, who's the Lansing and East Lansing Fire Chief. I'd like to start with him. Uh, we have the Lansing uh, Police Chief, Mike Yankowski. I'd like to get a report from him. Uh, Public Services Director, Chad Gamble. Human Services Director, Joan Jackson Johnson. Uh, I don't know, is uh, Allison Bono here from the Red Cross? Uh, 